Hey, I hope you're doing well. Just a quick story that I wanted to pass on uh, your way today, which has extremely important implications for you and also for me and any other tennis player who's trying to actually get better instead of just maintaining the whatever their status quo is in terms of their level of play. So I had a student last week who came to Milwaukee three years ago to do a private coaching session. She happened to work with Kevin, and her main focus during that session was, was her volleys. And she made some really big breakthroughs and improvements on her volleys. And she signed up for more private coaching in 2020. COVID happened, and then she had an injury. And so yada, 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 several years went by before she could get back here again in Milwaukee to now work with me since Kevin and Megan have uh, moved on. So her main focus, because she's transitioning from singles to all doubles, is still her net play. So we did, I, I did my normal kind of starting evaluation, recorded all of her strokes, and thankfully, because I knew volleys were her primary focus, her net play was her primary focus during our full day together, I not only did the normal routine of having her hit volleys with the ball machine, but we rallied some together too. So when I went and looked at the footage, what I saw on the ball machine repetitions was just checking all the boxes. Like everything I would have asked her to do in, in, in terms of setup position, in terms of moving to contact, in terms of her hand being relaxed, in terms of her racket continuing to move on her forehand volley, everything looked great. And she was, I, I could see like, when, when this is what you do for a living and you watch people move, you know, for a living, you can see the people that have been consciously working on and following good quality advice and the people who just aren't even aware of it. It's just not even on the radar, right? So against the ball machine, I could, I could see it. I, I could see all the pieces. It, it wasn't all perfect all the time, but I, at least I could tell like the, the awareness was there and the effort was there to do it correctly. Now, when we rallied together, and this was just a cooperative rally, and I said, okay, let's go back to service line, and we'll kind of move forwards together. We'll, we'll rally some volleys back and forth, because again, net play was her primary focus, and she's transitioning to doubles, and so I wanted to see, I wanted to kind of push her volleys a little more than what I normally would do in an evaluation warm-up, and it was really shocking <laughs> well, uh, to her and frankly also to me as well. Uh, this is what I, you know, what I love about working with students is that you almost always come away after a full day with a student with some kind of big like exclamation point on something. So in the contrast between ball machine volleys and rally volleys, it was, it was like a totally different player. It was like a totally different person. It was night and day. All the check boxes were being ticked on the, the ball machine rally, uh, on the ball machine hits of her forehand volley. And in the rallies, she, uh, every, it was all the opposite. It was, it was all totally different. She was coming down through contact. Uh, her hand was relaxed. So you could see the ball, the, the ball kind of pushing against the racket on the ball machine ones. On the rally ones, her hand was coming up through contact. She was kind of like scooping or like lifting and it almost looked like a mini ground stroke, which I've seen lots of times from, you know, that's not unusual at all. But the fact that she basically was like literally like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, it was like good quality volley and then old volley. She had no idea. This, you have to hear this like loud and clear. So, so please just understand these different pieces of information. She had already received fantastic training and given the plan and the process and all the information to make a big fundamental improvement in her forehand volley. She'd already trained it, she'd already practiced it, and without me reminding her or asking her or anything in the evaluation, she could do it all fantastic against the ball machine. And after two to three years of training and making progress, she the assumption that she had was, well, okay, so she's doing it now, and she was. <laughs> But here's the hard part, and this is the part that we all need to really take to heart. In more of a real life situation or environment, she was still going back to the old, old habit. And this is what's hard for all of us about really, truly improving. Not just understanding, which anybody can do that. Anybody can watch a YouTube video and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense, all right, cool, like I get it. And fool themselves into being like, oh, well next time I'm just gonna do that. 
that's like layer one of kind of like fooling yourself. <laughs> and lots and lots and lots of people do that. Uh, layer two is like getting the head knowledge and then actually doing it correctly a couple times and being like, okay, sweet, I got it. And then just assuming like, okay, now I'm doing, okay. Like maybe there's the, like their coach is like, oh yeah, that's the one, that's the one. Or they see one video of themselves like doing the right ones. Like, and th there's the assumption, level two of fooling yourself is, uh, is saying, okay, I did it once and now I'm good. Level three of fooling yourself is at least understanding there needs to be some repetition. Oh man, I need to invest, you know, time here. If this is really going to happen, then I need to go out and not just do it correctly once, but I got to do it a whole bunch of times. And, and level three of fooling yourself is going out and doing it a bunch of times, but not really expanding the level of challenge. So maybe this player will go out against the ball machine for six months and against the same ball, the same speed, the same tempo, just boom, again and again and again and again. And it's tempting to think that, okay, oh man, I put, in my, I put in my time, I put in my repetitions, and you know, kind of check it on video, man, it's looking good again and again, again, like 10 times out of 10 against the ball machine, it's looking fantastic. After six months, surely now I'm good. But no, you, it's so, and I, I hate to, I, I feel like I sound so like pessimistic, like saying this, or like, uh, I feel like such a downer. Um, but it's just the truth. And it's, it's just so important to understand. Like this person, super smart, super intelligent, um, does, does their homework, like really understands everything, has worked hard training, practicing, repeating, and reasonable athlete, not like the best athlete ever, but not uncoordinated. You know, there's pretty solid, you know, middle, middle of the road, like adult competitive player. So checks like all the boxes that need to be there. But there is still this big black box of, and I'm, I'm very, you know, confident in matches. This player is just going back to the old, like, kind of mini ground stroke volley, even though they had put in and checked, like, all the boxes that most players assume that they have to check. There's those multiple layers of, like, fooling ourselves. And if you're not aware of it, then you'll, you'll never take the next step and then the next step and then the next step. And so the thing that you're assuming you're mastering just hits a brick wall and just stops. And then you move on to something else. And, and that, that skill has just, has just completely halted its evolution into whatever the better thing is that you assume is, okay, sweet, I got it now. So <clears throat> just a cautionary tale here. And um, I don't mean to tell this story as like a, um, you know, to like wag my finger at this student or to be, to be like, oh man, you did it wrong or any, anything like negative or like um, judgmental like at all. This is the, this is like the experience and the path all of us have all the time with all of our shots, unless you're at like the top 5% of like coordination and athleticism and talent then you can kind of, you can start to skip like some of these, a little bit of this stuff and just like, oh, sweet, I got it. And just like decide you're going to do the new one. Okay. That's like top 1% of 1% of like talent or athleticism or coordination or, you know, whatever. For, mo for those of us who are like in the middle of the, the bell curve, man, you got to stay on top of it and you have to take very conscious, deliberate like steps if you really ever hope to take a new skill and truly like have it replace the old skill and all levels of challenge, all levels of pressure, so on and so forth. It's just, this is the reality of it. And, and this video is not going to get a lot of views. And any, any video where I focus on this is not going to get a lot of views because it's, it's not sexy. It's not what people want to hear. Uh, so frankly, if you're still watching right now and you're still listening to me, then I, I really respect you a lot. I really appreciate you a lot. <laughs> Because it, I, I feel like a lot of times I'm, I'm kind of shouting into a black hole a little bit on this uh, improvement process and, and like mastery, like development kind of stuff. Because it's not what people, nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants to hear it's like, oh, well, just do this, this drill and you're good. You're set. <laughs> like uh, as soon as you do it the first time, oh, yeah, that's it. Like good job. High five. Like, all right, great. You got a new backhand or a new forehand or whatever. And uh, I'm sorry. I, I like. I wish for most people that was true, but it's just not. It's not true for me, and so uh, I just feel responsibility to keep sharing these stories, because for those of you who do care, uh, it's the only way you're going to get the results that you want. 
like the, the big picture long-term like results is by really truly accepting this and understanding this and then, and then going and doing the work. So kudos to you if, if that's what you're doing. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. I appreciate you and I'll talk to you again soon.